Hey friends, my name is Mitch, and today we'll be trying Michael James Smith Art School. So I had a subscription before, but I never actually painted anything. But the level of quality in the school was enough that I came back. So I'm pretty impressed with how the school's laid out, the quality of videos, etc. So today we will give it a try. So I have a 9x12 white palette, as well as a toned premium gesso hardboard by Jack Richardson. I like these because I don't really want to prep my own. I'm sort of lazy that way, so having one already prepped for me is a huge convenience. So as you can see, these are nice and thin, and they're going to make a great board. So I have a sort of a easel, not really an easel, just sort of a little table holder from Michael's. And I put a couple of nails in there so that this is raised up off of the edge. The problem I had when I paint on the edge, it'll get here and it'll make the bottom look weird. So leveling, getting it leveled up a bit will help out in that regard. So, And over here, I have my handy computer already on the school. So let's take a look at the school real quick so you kind of get an idea of what's there. So here's what the school looks like. You have your obvious main menu where you learn how to draw, let's say, a cloudy sky, a puddle, a river, winter tree. So it seems like he adds new content every month, which is cool. So you have a variety of content already available. Obviously, all of these are photorealistic, fantastic looking paintings, uh, which is why I joined in the first place, to learn how to do that. Now, to do that, you do need some brushes. Of His brushes obviously will help make it easier. I think you can use, you know, whatever brushes you have, or you could make your own. I remember the first time I saw him on YouTube, he had made his own custom brushes by getting some scissors out and sort of hacking up some old brushes um, but, you know, right now, so that everybody can be on the same page, he has his own brush set over at Rosemary & Co. And you can just buy his brush set and have it shipped over to you and just use that. And that's what he uses in the tutorials. Instead of the old YouTube days, his first YouTube videos where he had his own custom brushes that he hacked together, um, now he uses the ones that you buy from Rosemary. So if you get his brush set, you will be seeing him use those brushes. So another part of his school is the gallery where you can see his previous works obviously look fantastic. That's why I joined, etc, etc. Um, and what makes this different, I think, from other schools is the forum. So he has like a Facebook type forum where you can go and not only discuss general painting or his lessons in general, he has a sub-forum for every lesson. So if you're having problems, let's say, with the river lesson or the one with the lonely tree or something like that, you can go directly to that discussion and ask questions and people are there. And there's a shocking number of people online all the time. Um, I think I logged in 7 a.m. Saturday and there was 11 people online. So it's not like you're going to be there by yourself and post something and never get a reply. I mean, it's very active. And if you like someone, you want to add them as a friend, you can do that. If you want to ignore someone that spams or whatever, you can do that as well. It has Facebook type functionality where you can like and love and <clears throat> do all sorts of, you know, uh, icons on the different paintings as well as you can post your own work and get critiques from other people, have other people see it, say, you know, you can improve it. They could maybe give you suggestions on how to improve it, etc. <clears throat> so there's quite a few bonuses on the forum and on a site, which I think differentiates it and makes it a bit better than, let's say, other sites especially the price point he has of 20 bucks a month, you can get a lot of information out of that site in a month. Um, and most subscription sites uh, don't have 
that level of video quality, uh, video editing, audio quality, as well as the forum. So I think that Michael's site is quite a bit above most of the other oil painting um, subscription sites that I've been to. So just my opinion and just sort of a, you know, a little tour of what you get on this site. All right, my acrylic blocking is done. The sky color here is way off. I'm startled at just how dark that is compared to his nice light peachy color that he has for the reference. The sky, you can tell, has a little bit of that peach in it. I guess that's okay, but I would prefer it to be a little bluer. Whatever acrylic brand he is using sure flows a lot better than mine. Uh, lesson learned here for me is I would rather have done the base coats in oil and just let it dry overnight. I think that's what I'm going to do from now on because the acrylic brand that I use does darken a lot more than I thought. So this color looked great when it went on, but now it's a bit too dark. So I, I know acrylic is, is immediate gratification because it dries instantly and then I can go to the oils but man I would rather nail the color for the background and be comf more comfortable with it even though it's getting covered up anyway I really want to nail it so that I'm, I have confidence in the overall picture uh, and then at the bottom that um, that looks not as orange as what he's doing but uh, obviously the this and this, who cares? But um, the sky and then the horizon, I really wish I would have done in oil. So that's my really only regret at this point. Um, I'm pretty happy with it overall, except for those two areas. So let's move on to the oil. And I will come back once we get sort of the sky blocked in with our oil. So the brand of oil we'll be using today is Blue Ridge Oil Colors, made by Eric Silver. You can find him at Blue Ridge Oil, or Blue Ridge something. Google Blue Ridge Oil Paints. I like them because they're dirt cheap. He makes it himself. It's just homemade. I mean, he has a, uh, grinds it out himself on machines out there, um, and it's dirt cheap. He has great customer service. If you have any issues at all, you just email him and he will uh, pretty much ship you whatever it was that was messed up. And the colors are just vibrant and fantastic. This is actually better than uh, most of the other oil paint I've used. So this is a, a high-end brand, even though it's sort of a, you know homemade out there by this one guy. It's, it's a high-quality brand and I love this paint. So we will be putting this over here and taking a stab at the sky. So I am back. It's been about 40 minutes. So I have my palette all set. Went with sort of a vertical palette here um, just because this is how it fits in my space. As you can see there's not, uh, if you look below here, there's not a lot of empty space there. So I'm kind of on the edge of the table. So I have a vertical palette going. And I am now done with my sky, and I'm pretty happy with it. So that's the horizon and the sky. So I fixed the big issue I had with the horizon of being too dark. I was able to handle that pretty well, uh, as well as the sky was very choppy from the acrylic that I had put on it. Uh, the main problem there was I didn't have the right colors, so I just had to improvise, but now that I look at it and sort of have a, a good angle with it, I think it looks pretty good. So I like the sky. It's nice and hazy. Uh, I like the blend between the sky and the horizon. And I think the horizon is dead on for the video. So I think we're doing really good. We have the sky done. Now the next step he has is the tree line. And then I think he goes over the water. And then the last thing, obviously, after this dries, I could be looking at letting this dry overnight and starting a different painting just to, you know, mix it up a little bit. I think this should be, the medium that I'm using is the um, Gamblin uh, No Solvent Gel. So I have some of this Gamblin No Solvent Gel. 
Here we go, Gamblin Solvent Free Gel. So I use this instead of liquid because I don't have a lot of ventilation. So this is safe, it's solvent free, it's nice gel, it's uh, oil painting medium, non-toxic. So I like this stuff. So I'm using this instead of liquid like he does. So overall I'm pretty happy with how the sky turned out. Now it's time to take a little break and then we'll move on to the trees and we'll be back in a minute. All right, checking in now for the tree line, which I am done with. So I, let's see, let's zoom in here. Pretty happy with the tree line. I'm sort of surprised how easy it was actually. So there's my tree line. I'm surprised how easy it was. And I think that his brushes help. I know, uh, well, if you have like a um, tree and texture brush from some of the other brands or whatever, um, that's going to help. His rigor brush is a nice one. So obviously uh, his brush set is really helping me out here from Rosemary & Co. in the UK. So I'm pretty pleased with the tree line. So just sort of checking in here. I like how it has different colors. You can see the tops of the trees are sort of picking up the horizon orange and things like that. So I'm pleased with it. Um, it's very well explained. It, uh, he, he leaves absolutely nothing out on the tree line. So he goes over it. He tells you what colors you need. He mixes it. He shows you. I like the feature on his site how when he's mixing a color, the palette will come into view and it's big. In other words, it's not like a small palette. It, it's a huge palette. Here, let, me, um, let me show you real quick. Uh, i got a freeze frame there. So you can see the palette is huge. And then when he's done with the palette, it goes away and then you concentrate back on the painting. So I think that's a nice design. Whoever does the editing for these videos, it's top notch. I'm really pleased with the uh, quality of the videos. So checking in on the tree line, let's move into the water and I will be back with another checkpoint. And we're back. So I got the water line done. Um, pretty pleased with it except for the this is being overly picky I guess but the top part um, on his has this light light blue and I don't have that I have that over here but I don't have that like in here so I may go back and put a little more of the light blue in there just to make it look better but um, Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the, the water line as a whole. So I do notice one thing I did was I evenly spaced the ripples. And man, I'm telling you now, Mike, um, Michael James Smith, he is the expert at making water ripples. It looks photorealistic in his, but not mine. What he does is he has a distinctive pattern that he does that like a ripple and then a mark mark ripple and and I mean he's been doing this like 20 years so obviously his looks significantly better but I do notice mine are more smudges and his are more like defined ripples so definitely something I need to work on um, to get that right for future paintings but overall, for a first shot, I think it's okay. I mean, it's acceptable, so I'm just going to leave it um, for now. I don't really want to do the redo the whole thing. So, uh, they are evenly spaced. I need to avoid that with the tree limbs. That's one thing I noticed that most of his students do um, with this particular painting, is they'll evenly space water ripples and tree limbs. So that's sort of what we do as humans, right? Just evenly space out things in empty space like if you get to a movie theater a little early and like you sit there the other people that got there early are all evenly spaced I mean that's just what we do with empty space when we fill it we got evenly space so something I want to avoid with the tree limbs when I put those in so today we're going to be doing the tree limbs and then we're going to be doing the base there the base of the right there so base and tree limbs and then the fill in the tree obviously 
and then sign it and we're done. So um, I've spent about four hours, so I would say uh, his lesson's five hours, about five more hours. So it looks like I'm going to be taking an extra two or three hours, and that's because I watched some of the movie like twice, you know. You, then you want to be extra careful because it's your first time doing it and things like that. So, um, so it looks like I'll be spending about seven or eight hours total for the painting, which is a lot for a little bitty 12 inch by 12 inch painting, but it's going to look good in the end and I think it should be worth it. So we'll see you uh, in the next chicken. And now the base is done. So we got the little base here done. Um, I tried to avoid two things I tried to avoid. One was having all of these evenly spaced, um, having all the the areas down here evenly spaced as well. So I think I accomplished my goal of having them be a little bit unique. So this area is more unique than this area, which has a clump here and a couple of things here. So I'm not clump, so I'm not evenly spacing a bunch of dots is what I wanted to avoid. And I think I accomplished that. As well as I wanted the the marks to go this way, one to go this way, one to go that way, one to go that way. Anything to give it variety so it doesn't look all the same. So I have some nice clumps areas, have nice variety. I think it looks okay. Um, so on the plants, in retrospect, I should have left some parts blank. In other words, have some plants here and then have a blank spot and then have some plants and, a, and another little blank spot, have some plants and a big blank spot or something, um, other than, you know, this evenly spaced thing here. But, I don't know, I think it looks alright. It doesn't look amazing, it looks okay. So, I did come in here, and I know the horizon is sort of coming in with this orangish color you see here. So I think some of the plants need to pick that up. So I went in with orange at the top of the mound where the sun would sort of be hitting here and I came in with a little bit of orange as well as you can see here let me zoom in closer to that can I zoom in? what is it doing? alright so you can see here I have some orange in that plant so that was kind of my goal there, was to, um, why is it not focusing? So that was my goal there, is to have orange in this plant right here. So, a little bit of orange here, and then the plants are going different directions. This one's going this way, this one's going a little bit this way, some are going straight up and down. So that's another thing that I wanted to do, was to... Uh, widen the variety of the directions and the plants. So I think I got there. All right, it's time for the worst part. Time to make the tree. So now comes the question, will I make all the tree limbs separated evenly or will I not mess them up? We shall see. Drum roll please, down to the final round. Let's see what I do. Be back in a minute. All right, I'm calling mine done. My tree doesn't have as much detail as his, but it has this nice lonely feel to it, right? I mean, it's not like, and I avoided the problems that I saw on his forum when people were posting. They would have all branches evenly spaced, the same length, all around so I have a nice clump here and it's sort of clumped up here and the rest it's sort of spaced out so the distance between this is not the same as like this for example you got a nice open space here nice open space here and sort of here and then it's all clumped up and bunched here and then here so 
I maintain that lonely feel, but at the same time, I did not, um, I did not clump everything. So not as many branches as his. It does still have a nice smooth flow into the sky. It looks okay. It doesn't look fantastic, but again, that's just my uh, version. So that is the end of it. So let's wrap up what did I like and what didn't I like about the school uh, instruction. I can say, number one, I absolutely adored the video quality, sound quality, and editing. Whoever did the editing, top notch, man. Whoever did the editing, top notch. When he went to the palette, it showed the palette. Nice big palette. You can see what's going on. When he's done with it, it vanished and he went back to the painting. When he did super, super little detail, it would like zoom in to the detail. So it would zoom right in to what he was doing, etc. Love that. Loved it. Loved it. Um, what I didn't like, I wish the videos would go to the next video when it's done. In other words, when you're done with video 2, for example, it would just stop and, and replay video two. It would be nice to go to video three automatically. I guess that's me being picky um, because then you had to hit back. So you have to stop painting. You got to go back. You got to find video three. You got to click it. You got to zoom all the way in full screen. It would have been nice just to go to the next video. Again, that's being picky. Um, love the forum. Great form. You can post your pictures and get feedback. Um, you can have people like, um, you know, sort of Facebook functionality. Okay, here's what I like the best. And this is me just ranting about how great this is. Once you're done with the school, so let's say you're like a painting fanatic, right? You go through all of his videos in like a month, two months, or whatever. You, you're done with that now here's the part that I love now you can go to uh, YouTube he has like hundreds of videos on YouTube they're sped up but you can slow them down on YouTube to a quarter speed and now that you know his technique you can do all the practice paintings that he did on YouTube so you have like a hundred more paintings to do I mean it's not like you're done with a school and now you're sort of done. If you want to practice more, you can go to his YouTube and do those too. Because now you know the techniques, right? Now you have the brushes that you need. I have the brush that I need. Now that I can go to his YouTube and I can do those as well. So, best 20 bucks, like 26 bucks. Best 26 bucks I've spent on painting instruction. I mean, this is better. The forum makes it better than let's say, uh, his competition. Just, I mean, I'm just saying the forum, the video quality, the sound quality, the editing, everything makes it better than the competition. This is currently, in my opinion, the best oil painting instruction you can get on the internet. I mean, this, this is better than, let's say, some of the lessons you get that are 200 bucks from some of these major sites. His lessons are just better. They're better quality. They're better done and they teach you more granted you do have to go buy the brushes if you don't have you know these type of brushes you have to go get them but that's like 50 bucks i think so best money i've spent very pleased with it i hope you uh enjoyed my journey through the michael james smith school i'm definitely going to be st immediately starting the next lesson i'm really having fun so um, thank you for joining me and see you next time.